Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Sid Padia. I'm an interventional radiologist at UCLA. And today I'm gonna to talk about a new treatment for knee arthritis. In interventional radiology, we perform image-guided, minimally invasive, non-surgical procedures, typically using x-rays and ultrasound. If you have any questions, you can ask them on Twitter using this hashtag or via Facebook. Now let's start with a little bit of background on osteoarthritis. This is a very common problem both in the United States and worldwide and typically affects several hundred thousand people. Now this is age related, so most people who have osteoarthritis typically start in their 50s and 60s. And it typically has an equal prevalence among males and females. And it's a significant leading cause of disability and a decrease in lifestyle, including pain. Now there are multiple treatment options, as you can see here, for the treatment of arthritis. On the left side, you have uh, patients who have really conservative treatment, either no treatment or things that are self-administered at home. This could include things like bed rest or leg elevation, ice packs, and medical management includes things like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Examples include ibuprofen and naproxen, and in rare cases, people may need opiates or narcotics. On the other end of the spectrum, in patients with severe osteoarthritis, they may be good candidates for knee replacement, uh, total knee arthroplasty, or knee replacement surgery. Now, in terms of surgical interventions, these work extraordinarily well, have very long durability, and very good success rates. So most people may be candidates for knee replacement surgery if they have very advanced arthritis. There are many people who may either not choose to get surgery or may not be good candidates for surgery because they have other medical conditions which make them higher risk. And also in this category, they may include joint injections where you have an injection of a steroid or a viscous supplementation in the knee joint to decrease the inflammation and pain. Now one of the challenges in getting joint injections is that they are often temporary and have temporary relief and pain and inflammation can come back after several weeks or several months. So what this means is that you may need repeated recurrent injections and it may stop to work after a while. So let's look at one example. This is an 89 year old. Uh, he was previously healthy and active and you can see his x-ray here on the right uh, from his right knee and his left knee. Now he's undergone, uh, he has significant pain in his right knee due to arthritis. And you can see the joint space on his right knee uh, is markedly narrowed on the outside aspect compared to his left knee where the joint spaces are quite normal. Now he has undergone multiple joint injections and in the beginning they worked really well, but after a while getting repeated joint injections, they stopped working. Now at 89 years old, he was told that he should have a total knee replacement but he was concerned about the surgical recovery time and he had some other comorbid or medical conditions that made him a higher risk for anesthesia. So what we used to think about osteoarthritis was that this was a wear and tear phenomenon. In other words, that over age, especially when you're in your 50s, 60s, and 70s, the padding between your knee joints just gets worn out. And so the bones on top of each other cause friction and they cause inflammation and pain. And that's partly true, but there's also another thing going on. And within the knee joint, there are all these chemicals and enzymes that eat away at the meniscus and eat away at the cartilage. Uh, these go by names such as VEGF and interleukin. And with time, as you can see in this, uh, as in this photograph, you have this thick purple layer of cartilage. And as that breaks and cracks, it releases these enzymes in the joint space and these enzymes cause inflammation and they in return cause more cracking and more breaking of the cartilage and the meniscus. So it becomes this vicious cycle of inflammation and cartilage and meniscus degeneration. So the goal is to stop this inflammatory process so we can preserve the joint and decrease people's pain. So how do we do that? Uh, this is a, uh, that one way we can do this is a genicular artery embolization. This is a new procedure that's being performed in the United States, and the goal is to stop this inflammatory process. What we do is we slow down the blood flow in the arteries in the knee in order to decrease the inflammation. So how is this done? This is an outpatient procedure. In other words, one goes home at the end of the day. The procedure itself takes two hours, 
and it's done with conscious sedation through an IV. In other words, there's no general anesthesia involved. You get an IV and some medications through the IV to make you sleepy and, uh, and comfortable. A local numbing anesthetic is applied at the fold of the leg, and through the skin, a small hollow bore catheter is inserted into the blood vessel. The size of the catheter is about the size of a piece of spaghetti, and it's completely painless as it enters the artery in the leg. And using this x-ray, which you can see on top, the catheter is maneuvered down the leg into the arteries into the knee. The procedure itself is completely painless. Once we're in the knee, we inject contrast dye and take x-rays, and that's called an angiogram, which you can see on the right. Now in this specific case, we put a small marker on the person's skin right where they had pain, which you can see right here. And you can see all the black outlines are the arteries in the knee, including one area where there's a blood vessel going straight to the area with the person's pain. Once we're here, we also perform a three-dimensional uh, CT scan to look at the relation of the bones, the joint, and the blood vessels in relation to the uh, specific location of the person's pain. From here, we actually go into the artery, going into the area where the person has pain, and you can see a small triangular shaped area of inflammation right here next to the BB marker, and that corresponds to the inflammation to the inflammatory process which is causing the arthritis. Through that small little catheter, we inject very tiny particles. These are 100 microns in di diameter. They look like small grains of sand. You, they're hardly visible, and we inject a very small aliquot of these particles in order to decrease or get rid of the inflammation in that artery. The final result, which you can see on the right, is that the artery is maintained but this triangular hyperemia or inflammation has dis disappeared. And this procedure, again, takes about two hours. The catheter is removed, a Band-Aid is applied, and people are usually walking within two to three hours after the procedure. Afterwards, you can resume your normal activities the following day. What we typically do for every person who undergoes this procedure is get a pain score. And this is what's called a WOMAC pain scale. It's based on people who have arthritis and very well validated. It's a 96 point scale. And in the beginning, this specific patient had a score of 56, which is quite high. After two weeks after undergoing the procedure, he, his score decreased from a score of 56 down to 26. But most importantly, he had a marked relief of his pain and significant increase in his overall physical activity where you can see him actually jogging in place at 89 years old, only two weeks after the procedure. Most importantly, in terms of his lifestyle, before he was able to walk several blocks, and now he's able to walk three miles without any significant discomfort, uh, only a few weeks after the procedure. So much of this uh, procedure was originated in Japan by Dr. Okuno and colleagues. They published their experience in a peer-reviewed medical journal in July 2017. In their study, they looked at 72 patients with 95 knees undergoing this procedure from 2012 to 2016. In all these patients, they had uh, knee pain localized to the knee joint. People were between 40 and 80 years old, but most importantly, everyone had failed some kind of conservative therapy that may have included medications or joint injections, and they still had recurring pain after the joint injections. They all went, underwent the genicular artery embolization procedure, as seen here. And when looking at their uh, WOMAC arthritis index score at baseline, an average of 43, and you can see consistent decreases at one month, four months, six months, 12 months, and even two years. So the functionality improved over a two-year period. The pain decreased over a two-year period. So this was a sustained, improved response over several years. Most importantly, a lot of patients had, uh, were taking opiates, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and getting joint injections prior to the procedure. So as an example, uh, 28 patients were taking oral NSAIDs before treatment, which you can see here. 20 patients were taking oral opiates, as you can see here, prior to the procedure. At the one year or the 12 month mark, very few patients needed medications, 
for their knee arthritis. So it, by undergoing the procedure itself, they didn't feel the need to take any more pain medications, uh, which was durable and lasting at one and two years. They, de they demonstrated an 85% rate of clinical success in people with mild and moderate pain. And even with severe pain, they had a 70% success rate, which was sustained at the two and three year mark. So patients underwent a single procedure with sustained results even at three years. Now let's review again the treatment uh, for people with knee arthritis, again ranging from the most conservative, which is self-administered, to the most advanced, which is knee replacement surgery. And in this middle ground where we have medical management, which uh, often fails, and joint injections, which are sometimes temporary, I think we can add genicular artery embolization to the armamentarium in treating people with painful arthritis. Well, some of the advantages of doing this procedure, it actually uses a standardized platform that's used in interventional radiology. This is nothing new to us. We perform this type of procedure in patients with other conditions. So as an example, in people with liver cancer, uh, this is done quite routinely. It's uh, available at, uh, in our department at Interventional Radiology in UCLA, and we have shown proven safety with very low uh, rates of side effects. The downtime for patients undergoing this procedure is extremely short and most people can resume their normal activities the following day. It's extraordinarily minimally invasive. There are no stitches afterwards. You simply walk at home with a Band-Aid. Uh, most importantly, there has been shown to be improved pain uh, and function scores after the procedure which is sustained for even up to two and three years. And therefore, we feel that this is a worthwhile procedure undergoing in the appropriately selected person. UCLA is also running a single center prospective trial on genicular artery embolization for symptomatic knee arthritis. This is approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and it's also approved by the UCLA Institutional Review Board. The goal of this study is to assess the safety and efficacy of genicular artery embolization for the treatment of symptomatic knee osteoarthritis. The goal is to enroll 40 patients at UCLA, 20 patients with moderate pain, and 20 patients with severe knee pain. This is a joint effort between interventional radiology and orthopedic surgery in this clinical trial. It looks like we have some questions, so I'm going to answer some questions that came in uh, via online. So the first question is, I've had joint injections in my knees and they used to work, but they don't seem to work anymore. Am I a good candidate for the knee embolization procedure? So that's a great question. That joint injections typically after non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs fail is a very good first step for uh, pain relief. And that's what most people will get. And so what we're really doing is uh, this procedure is aimed for people who have failed or have been resistant to joint, in to joint injections. So what we do is we encourage people to try joint injections because that's a very good first or intermediary step before undergoing this procedure. So yes, you may be a very good candidate for this procedure. The second question is, can this procedure be used to treat arthritis in other joints? So that's a great question. So first, we've been uh, addressing the knee arthritis uh, with this procedure, but in theory, this can be used for other joints. So other joints that we have been uh, assessing are the shoulder and the elbow. We're still early in our experience with shoulder and elbow arthritis, but it is certainly feasible in those two joints uh, currently. And that's it for the questions. So if you have any other questions, feel free to email me directly on this email address. You can also call my office. We can speak in phone or for an in-person appointment. Thank you very much.